Galilee. He comes up and he says to John, I have to be baptized. John goes, I'm not even worried that he'd take your shoes off. And he goes, but this is right and this is good and this is fitting. John baptizes him. Heavens open up. A dove signifies the Spirit's calling on his life. Well, in the rest, the rest is called the gospel. It changed the world. These people that are about to be baptized, they're believing for the same thing. This is their next best step. This is what God is asking them to do. I don't know if there'll be a dove that'll land on their head. I, I don't know if the heavens will open up, but I do know this. Something happens when you do this. You're changed from the inside out. You don't have to understand it. You just have to walk in it. And so when these candidates, when they go in, when, I, when they come back up out of the water, we may not open up the heavens, but can you open up your joy? Can you open up your mouths and praise God? The Bible says that when one comes to the kingdom, all of heaven erupts. Let's erupt today. Let's, let's celebrate with them that life will never be the same after this moment. Folks, this is Sue. Can you say hi, Sue? Come on up. Sue, I know that this is a little bit uh, new for you and perhaps you're a little nervous on this. This is, Sue's only been here for just a few short weeks. And yet, in her heart, she feels that this is the most important thing to do. Now, the one thing I do know is because this is all new for you, I want you to know, Sue, this is family. You're, you're here, and I read your story. This is about becoming family. You need a family. You need God's family in your life. I want you to know that today, this act is a part of the family. You are loved. You are welcomed. You are wanted. And God has something very special. Today is the beginning of something that's very special in your life. I look forward to hearing your testimonies. I get to know you a bit better. I'm looking forward to hearing what God does in your life with this family, your family, in the days to come. So I'm going to invite you to get into the tank. Go down to one knee. There we go. You want to serve Jesus with all of your life. Amen. Upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on now. Let's celebrate with Sue. Let's celebrate with her. Yeah. New beginnings. And this is Mark. Mark, this is kind of a unique day today, eh? What's so special about today? Pardon? It's also my birthday. It's also your birthday. Woo! Boy, I can think of a lot of things that would not be as good as this. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve years old. The beginning of a whole new life that is in front of you. I know this is all fresh. This is all new. And your family's getting baptized. Everybody after this is just family, right? So you're the first one. You lead the way on your birthday. I know that God has something very special for you. And as you grow up, there'll be many other birthdays. But I want you to remember this one because this is the day when you said, I've decided to follow Jesus. And as you do that, God is going to open up opportunities for you. I pray that God gives you the wisdom to know that whenever you come to roads, that you'll know which road to walk in and which way to go. I pray that for you. Let's water baptize you. Marcus, upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on now, let's give it up for Marcus. Hey. And this is Simon. 
Now, Simon, that was your brother. How old are you? 13. 13. You're one ahead of him. So the younger led the older. Yeah, kind of. But this is your mind. This is your decision, right? You're not doing this because you're ready. You're doing this because this is right for you. This is your moment. This is your time. You know what? You're going to have all kinds of other times. You're going to have all other kinds of moments where you're going to have to choose. You're going to have to decide. I hope and I pray that you'll remember this day that you made a choice. When you have those other choices that you're going to have to make in life, remember, you know how to make good choices. Today is a good choice. I pray that tomorrow and all the days forward, God gives you the wisdom to know what is a good choice to make. So let's baptize you. Simon, upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on now. We celebrate with you, Simon. Oh, this is great. Darren, I am so excited for this today. I've gotten to know you now for quite a little while. Darren's also one of our hosts. She was supposed to be hosting up there today, but we can't do this and she's got to dry off. So she'll be hosting in the, in the next service. But this is your family. Your family was water baptized and now you want to do it. Tell me a little bit about why you're here. Why is this so important for you? Well, my walk with God has been, you know, uh, over the years and um, I really can't, describe a time that I had this kind of, you know, experience. And I also believe that God is leading in such a time as this to do what you are, I mean, what is not common. Yeah. You know, he's calling you out. And I believe this is a call out for me. Mm -hmm. And um, a call to new beginning, a call to a deeper walk with him. Yeah. And a call to, to just, you know, learning to be more and more like him. Yeah. I love that phrase. This is a call out. This is, that's what John the Baptist was doing. He was calling out and people were, lives were being changed. And then Jesus responds and the Father called out. I want you to remember this day and remember this moment that God is always wanting to call you out. He's wanting to call you apart. He's wanting to separate you. He has something special in store. Remember this moment when he calls you out because I have a feeling he's going to call you out some more in the future. So when he does, remember this moment. Darren, upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, fantastic. Household baptism. Fantastic. This is Austin. So good to have you here today, and I know that this is, a, this is a fresh new beginning for you, and you're kind of relatively new to Gateway, but you have made some conscious decisions to serve Him, to honor Him with your life for the remainder of your days. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to get into the water tank, and as you kneel down... Austin, every day is a new day for a new beginning. Regardless of where we are in our life, God is a God of second chances and new beginnings. And I pray that for your life, that regardless of what is behind, when you go into this water, that's over. Today is a new day for you. Upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Celebrate with him. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Moyo. Hi, Moyo. How are you? How old are you? Uh, uh, 13. 13. Wow. Your whole life is just ahead of you. Today you've made this decision that it's right for you to follow Jesus. Your friends and your family are all here. I want you to understand that in the days to come, there's gonna be a lot of decisions you're gonna to have to make. 
and you're going to go, is this the right decision or is that the right decision? I want you to remember this day. Because you know what? This day is a reminder. You know how to make good decisions. And we celebrate with you in that. So I'm going to invite you to take a knee. While you're on the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Celebrate with her. Oh, great days, great days. And this is Ao. Ao, was that your sister? Wow. So you and your sister are doing this. Is your mom here? Where is she? Hi, mom. Oh, there we go. There we go. What a great day. What a proud day. Ao, just like I said to your sister, there'll be all kinds of decisions you're going to have to make. And sometimes they're going to be tough. And those decisions may be scary. But I want you to know that if you're a brave girl, whatever decisions, if you ask Jesus first, He'll never steer you wrong. So upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is Emmanuel. They were your sisters? Oh, oh, <laughs> you're not exactly too kicked up about that. Yeah, yeah. You know what, Emmanuel? This is your decision. It's not theirs. Today you stand as a man. You take your future into your hands. You've got friends and family that will lead you and guide you and help you. You've got all kinds of mentors and people that will steer you and, and encourage you. But today, today you make your decisions you choose to follow Jesus. Let me remind you of that, that in the days to come, you make your choices, make them wise, and make them well. Upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Fantastic, yeah. This is Marley. What a joy this is. It, it's, it's when I get to these moments that I'm so excited because being able to pastor this long, I remember when you were born. Oh, and the joy on your faith and the excitement that you have and watching you serve around the church and watching you get involved. Hard to believe that you've gone from here now to here and to see what the future is. I know I can see in your face, you're excited about the future. Your family's excited about the future. Can I remind you something? Jesus is excited about your future. Do you believe that? Jesus' plans are so great. He's excited for your tomorrow. Never forget that. Upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Francesca. Francesca. You're excited too, aren't you? Feel this moment. Don't be afraid of it. Feel this moment. God's presence is right here. God's hand is on your life. I know your friends are here and they're celebrating with you, but this is your moment. This is your time. God wants to do something special for your future. Nothing else matters right now. Remember this day and remember this moment. It will hold you for the rest of your life. Today you make a good choice. 
Francesca, upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh. This is Naomi. Oh, it's so good to see you again. I remember when you were born. <laughs> Married your mom and dad. <laughs> now look at you. I was going to say all grown up, but you still got a ways to go. <laughs> God has something very special for your future. I know that. I know that with all of my heart. He will take you in places that, I believe he's going to take you places that you've not yet dreamed of. There'll be years when you're going to look back and go, I never thought I'd be here. Some of that might be scary. Remember, wherever you find yourself in the future, God's hand is with you. He is excited for your tomorrow, wherever that will lead you. Upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, celebrate. Myla. And this is Myla. How long have you been here? Um, since grade six. Since grade six. And what grade now? Grade 10. Grade 10. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. You got all your friends that are here. Is your family here? Yeah. Where are they? Over there. <laughs> They're, oh, half the church. <laughs> They're all here. And they celebrate with you. Your family, your friends, your church family, all of GSM. And that... <laughs> That's all awesome. But again, I want to remind you, this is your journey. The days will come when you won't feel like you have all of that. There will be days where you're going to go, it's just me and God. Now what? When you hit those moments, I want to remind you, he's enough. Jesus is enough for you. And your future is secure in that. Upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, let the house celebrate. All of these are just such great celebrations. We, we, we rejoice with every single one. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, maybe this is my next step. We will always make opportunity for that in the days to come. One of the privileges of being a pastor is that every once in a while, you get to do something that you dreamed of doing when you were becoming a pastor. Pastor Wayne is gonna baptize his daughter. So this is Melody. <laughs> Melody, um, it was just almost to the day, 15 years ago, your mom and I sat over here and we came up to the front and we dedicated you as our child. We dedicated ourselves to raise you to serve God. And 15 years ago, that was mine and your mom's promise. Today, as you stand here, this is not my promise. This is not your mom's promise. Sorry. This is your promise to God that you have decided to follow him and to live for him. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. I'm going to get you to get in the tank. Step in.
Imagine with me you're Jewish. You're a Jew who lives in the ancient Near East during the days of Jesus, the writers of the New Testament. The time has come for one of the Jewish annual festivals. It's called Yom Kippur, which, by the way, is this weekend. It's a celebration of atonement, of forgiveness, of making things right with God. You make the pilgrimage from where you live to the city of Jerusalem, the holy city, in obedience to the Torah, which was the Old Testament writings of the time. Your ultimate destination is the temple. The purpose? Worship. The motivation? Thanksgiving. Thankfulness for all that God has done for your family and friends. You bring with you a lamb, the sacrifice. You've raised this lamb from its birth and your family has cared for this lamb and you are bringing this lamb as a sacrifice for the transgressions of your sin and the purification of both your life and your family's and you are so grateful to God that he made a way through this sacrifice. A way was made for you to be right with God. So you leave home and you're focused and you're determined, you're expectant. You, you travel in the caravan because to travel alone was quite dangerous. So it's you and, and many other families. And you're traveling along this road all excited about this big celebration weekend. But something happens along the way. I mean, it's a long journey. And the sun, it's so hot. The path is, is unyielding. It's hilly and windy and rocky. And <laughs> that animal that you're bringing, that sacrifice is now so heavy. You had to carry it. It's heavy and it's getting frustrating. And, and, and the lamb is kind of, it's kind of meh, ornery. But I'd be ornery too if I knew I was about to die. The caravan you're traveling with as well, it's gotten noisy. It was kind of festive, but now different personalities have come out, different attitudes, kind of like the aunts and uncles that are joining you this weekend. <laughs> People get a little cranky. I mean, we were all excited, but now we're just kind of tired and frustrated. And at some point in this weekend, in this journey, you're going, why are we doing this again? Is this journey actually worth it? Couldn't we have just sent the sacrifice ahead of time and just stayed home? Why did I make this journey? Why am I taking these steps, making these decisions it's too hot, it's too long, it's too hard. And what starts out as an expression of gratitude just gives birth to a season of grumbling and complaining. You turn and go home, but <laughs> you've traveled this far, you might as well press on. And so you do until you draw near to the city of Jerusalem, but at some point, at some point you begin to hear a sound you begin to hear a song. It's a joyful song, a celebrated song. And as you approach the gates of the city, the source of this joyful noise, along the pathway to the great city gates, there's greeters there. And they're singing. And they're making this joyful noise. And they're genuinely happy to see you. They've never met you, but they're so warmed and happy to have you. And they lift this song. It's a familiar song. You've heard it before. You sang this song for many years as a child. And now for that hour or so before as you approach the holy city, the words of the song, it melts away the, the tiredness. It melts away the frustration and the angst. This would be the experience of many of the pilgrims who would travel to Jerusalem for Yom Kippur. 
They call it the happiest day of the way, of the year. And on this special weekend, as they make their way, the words of this song would resound. And they would go something like this. Would you sing it with me? Shout for joy to the Lord. Come on now, where's the slide? Waiting for it. Nope. Okay, then I'm going to sing it for you, but you, I'm, no, I'm not going to sing it. I'll just say it. Shout to the Lord, joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs and know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We're his. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. So we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We give thanks to him and we praise his name. For the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Good morning. Welcome to our Thanksgiving celebration weekend. We are so grateful for God's many blessings in our lives. Amen. I know that you're here today for many reasons. There's all kinds of things that cause people to come here to, uh, to come or to not come. You, you come here for acceptance, to find healing. You come to belong. We come to receive something from him, a second chance, restoration, hope, so much more. And here at Gateway, we want all of those things for you. Our prayer, my prayer has always been that when someone comes to Gateway, that they will leave feeling that they had received more than they gave, but today. Today's a little bit different. Today's not about the getting. Today's about giving. Giving thanks. Today and for the next few weeks, I'm going to be focusing a series on our lives and all that God has given and that we would pause before we get into the Christmas season and all of that which is wonderful to consider our response to the giving of God that we might discover the transforming power when we give. When we give thanks for his goodness. When we consider his abundant blessings in our lives and we give generously of our resources and time. Giving forgiveness in order to experience healing and transformation, giving selflessly to serve others in their need and their brokenness. So in the course of this fall season, we will reflect on our lives and hopefully to discover all that is mine to give. Thanksgiving is a lifestyle. Gratitude is a lifestyle. It's a way of perspective. In fact, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus or you are a follower of Jesus and this is all new to you, please know that gratitude is a marker of someone who is following him. You know that you're following Jesus when you are living a life of gratitude because this life is a gift from God, but what you do with it, what you do with your life and all that he has given, that's your gift back to him. Cicero said that gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues, but it is the parent of all virtues. Gratitude is the value that unlocks all of the others. Those qualities that you aspire to, what, what you would want to be with your life. More loving, more kind, more, more peaceful, less anxiety. Whatever it is that you would aspire to in life, I can tell you this, gratitude is the key to unlock all those other things. If we could just grasp the power of gratitude, it'll transform your life. In a few hours, this afternoon, this evening, maybe tomorrow, maybe you've already done it, but you'll gather around kitchen tables and dining room tables and you'll celebrate a measure of thanksgiving. I've talked to a few people who are thanksgiving is not the practice of their traditions from the country that they're from. And they're going, yeah, we're trying to figure this all out because we don't do thanksgiving in our country. And so I understand for some of you, you're going, man, we're still trying to figure this all out. But in our home, in our home, we begin with everyone going around the table and saying one thing that they are thankful for. 
Now, sometimes it has to go really fast because everybody's pretty hangry and they just want to get on with it so we can get to eating. But, but you know what I'm talking about. Sharing with the family and friends those things that you're most grateful. Paul. Paul said, whoever sows sparingly also reaps sparingly. Whoever sows generously reaps generously. That we should decide to give or that we should choose to give because God loves a cheerful giver so that in our abundance, he gives us all things at all times, all of our need, that we might abound in good work so that when we give, we give out of the harvest of his goodness so that we can be enriched, but others might also be enriched. And it results in a thanksgiving to God. Here's my point. When you hear the words of Paul talking about sowing sparingly and reaping sparingly, can I challenge some of you today? That pertains as well to gratitude because that's what he says. It results in thanksgiving to God. Let me challenge you today that if you sow thanksgiving sparingly, you reap gratitude sparingly. That it is a practice. It is an effort and a conscious decision. Because every day, every day we give. We give ourselves to someone, to something. We give our emotions. We give our heart, our attention. We Every day we're giving our resources, our time, we're giving to our family, to one another. Like I said, being a giver is a marker of being a follower of Jesus. What are you giving to God? It's on this day that we stop asking God for anything and just consider that if he never gave us another thing, has he not given us enough? Have you not been blessed enough? When I take stock of this world in which we're living in, it's at Thanksgiving that I realign my, my attitude. I realign my recognitions and my acknowledgements in my own life. Because contrary to the world's opinion or the world's philosophy, we're not self-made. We're God made. In a world of confrontation and angst over economics and health care and strikes and protests and politics and everything else, can we just pause on one day and just say thank you? Can we just pause and look around at our country and not complain about what it isn't, but just thank? God for Canada and the place that we live and the homes that we have and the food that we have and the air that we breathe and the health care and, and, and even the politics. Can we just thank God for the country we have for just one day? And just be filled with gratitude. There's a whole lot of other worse places you could be living right now. And a whole lot of worse experiences you could be having right now. Before we get into communion, I just want to give you just two or three very, very quick thoughts to remind us of something you already know, but Thanksgiving is a reminder kind of day. And the first thing is just this, simply that every good thing that I have comes from God. That needs to be acknowledged today. Everything that's good in your life comes from God. Every, everything that you would go, well, I'm really grateful for these things. Understand, they come from God. See, the temptation is, I worked hard for them. Especially as you get older. For the young ones, you don't have anything. <laughs> you're, you're still climbing that ladder. So you're just focused on surviving and your fingers are crossed for thriving. But for those of us who get a little bit older, it's easy to look back and go, boy, I worked hard for what I have. Whether you're climbing or thriving, can I just again remind us today? Everything 
Every good thing comes from God. Did you work hard? Yes. Were you wise? Yes. Were you responsible? Yes. Were you accountable? Yes. Were you a good steward of his blessings? Yes, 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 yes. But you have to understand that every place where you are succeeding or have succeeded, you have exceeded because God has given you a blessing. He's given you health. He's given you healing. He's given you hope. He's given you possibilities. He's given you friends. He has given you family. He has given you life. And he has given you opportunity. And today we stop and just say, thank you. All good things come from you. Second reminder is that I choose that I will not let what I want rob me of what I have. I will not let what I want rob me of what I have. You see, contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, but it is the realization of what you already possess. It comes from appreciating all that you have received, not constantly looking for more. It's about finding peace in the presence of the moment and not always living for tomorrow that may not come or turn out the way you want or expect. When we focus on our blessings, our relationships, our experiences, and even the small joys of daily living, we cultivate a sense of satisfaction that eternal circumstances could never diminish. You see, it's not happy people who are grateful. It's great Grateful people who are happy. I get up in the mornings and I get up before the, the sun rises and I, I, I do this very often. I get up and I go outside regardless of the temperature, regardless of what it is, and I stand out in the dark of the night in the middle of my yard and I feel the earth, I feel the concrete on my feet or the stones on my feet and I look up at the sky and I just thank God for this moment. As I stare at the stars and I feel how small I am in this universe and recognize how large I am in his heart. Paul said this, I have learned to be content in every circumstance. You see, this is the challenge. We think contentment is just something that happens. Uh uh. Paul had to learn it and so do you. So do I. You learn contentment. You practice contentment. He said, I know what it is to have need. I know what it is to be in plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether I'm hungry or well-fed, whether I'm cold or whether I'm, I, I'm warm or comforted, whether I live in plenty or whether I'm living in want. I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. Every good thing comes from him. I will not let what I want rob me of what I have. And last, generous giving will always turn my blessings into praise. Now, I need you to really pay attention to this. Generous giving will always turn my blessings into praise. We sang about this today. Now, why is this so important? Hear me. Because every time we don't, we turn, every time we don't turn blessing into praise, it eventually turns into pride. Generous giving will always result in blessing and praise. But if I don't praise him, if I don't acknowledge his goodness, if I don't lift up his voice, my life will turn to a souring pride because at the end of the day, catch this, at the end of the day, there are only two persons who will ever get the credit for the success of your life. You or God. They're the only two. Your gratitude will measure you more than anything else in your life. Like one of the ancients before Jesus said, I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied with the richest of foods with singing my mouth will praise you. God, I thank you for my health. I thank you for my friends. I thank you for provision. I thank you for healing, for protection. Thank you for my job and my finances. I am so content. I am so thankful. I thank you for my family, my children, and my grandchildren. 
David the psalmist said, let all that I am praise the Lord and may never forget the good things that he does for me. For he forgives all of my sins and he heals me of all of my diseases. For he redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. Someone say amen today. I will not wait to be grateful. It's a decision today. I will not hesitate to give him praise and thanksgiving because the hand of God is on my life. The hand of God is on my family. He is on my finances. The hand of God is on my home and my future. So I give. I choose to give. I give thanksgiving to God today and I will give it generously. Someone give him some praise in this house today. We're going to end with some communion. If you have those emblems, you want to take them today. If this is your first time here, if you're a guest with us today, and again, this is all kind of new to you, we want you to join us because I know this. Jesus is very grateful that you're here today. And so are we. We want you to come and be among us and be a part of us on this Thanksgiving weekend. When I look out over this room, I thank God for you. I thank God for each and every one of you. And communion is a reminder of the generosity of God. You see, the gospel message is just this. God so loved the world that he, his son Jesus Christ. As I said earlier today, it's Yom Kippur for the Jewish community as they celebrate and acknowledgement the atonement of God for one another. The reconciling of us into relationship through forgiveness of sins. It's a time for seeking forgiveness, for making amends with one another, a time for spiritual renewal and an alignment, a realignment of our convictions and values. It's about uh, the connection that we have as a community and the bonds that we share together, and we do so with a heart of gratitude. And so what we're going to do today is a little bit different. I'm going to invite you to take those emblems. There's a song that's going to be sung, and while this song is being sung. I want you in, in, in the moment that God says yes for you, I want you to take that wafer. That wafer is a symbol of his broken body. Jesus said, partake of it and remember that I die for you. And then you will drink of the juice and the juice is a symbol of his shed blood poured out for you so that yours doesn't have to be. And in that you thank God that he has reconciled you back into relationship with him, that all things are possible, that in his blessing, his many blessings over your lives, that there is a future for you, regardless of how much you have failed, regardless of where you're at, regardless of your faith or lack thereof, regardless of your unbelief, regardless of your insurity or your anxiety. God says, I love you so much. My son does this for you, that you can be in relationship with me. I want you to partake when you feel ready. I want you to then sit there and thank him. Whatever comes to your heart, thank him.